Hello internet friends! Today I am putting together a video that I still haven't decided what the title is going to be. I kind of already missed the boat on putting together all of my favorite purchases of 2023. I mean we're already into February and I feel like I've already made some great purchases. Instead I want to talk about pieces that have just wholeheartedly elevated my style. I think a lot of you guys have noticed that I've been going through some changes in my personal style and my wardrobe and I just want to talk about some pieces that I've been loving and that have made a world of difference in how I get ready for the day. So buckle up and let's dive into all of the pieces that I am just currently loving. Number one on the list has to be ballet flats. I cannot even begin to tell you how much of a difference this has made in my wardrobe. As a self-proclaimed lover of sneakers, tennis shoes, whatever you want to call them, I just would always grab my New Balance shoes and I wore them into the ground, which is what I want to do with my shoes. I want to get the most out of them. I cannot begin to tell you how many times I get stopped. I think I'm starting to become known as the person who wears ballet flats to Goodwill. I've even had people tell me that they recognize me based on my shoes. Like they saw me at multiple stores and they were like, oh, you're the girl who always wears cute ballet shoes. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, that's me. They're a way to kind of polish off your outfit and pull it together without falling into the trap of just always grabbing sneakers. I know for some people ballet flats can be a little triggering because we oftentimes will think back to the early Y2K days. Those really, really flat ballet shoes. They had nothing going on. They just were literally ballet flats and that was it. There was no embellishment. There was no oomph to them. A lot of times our feet would stink after wearing them. There's a lot to unpack with wearing ballet flats, but I do think going the Mary Jane route was where I was able to separate the two in my head. They still feel like ballet shoes, but there is that difference in the overall construction of the shoe. And I just think shoes in general have come such a long way as far as comfort and wearability. Ballet flats, man, I'm in. I'm here, I'm all for them. Next up, let's talk about elevated t-shirts. Now I have been a fanatic of band t-shirts and just vintage t-shirts in general. I have a collection of Harley t-shirts. I have a collection of Disney t-shirts. These are coveted pieces in my wardrobe and I have no intentions of stopping wearing them. However, I am finding a lot of joy in really nice elevated t-shirts. Just want to preface this with this was thrifted. I didn't pay full price for this. This is a Brunello Cuccinelli t-shirt. If you know, you know. This is one of those pieces that you cry a little bit when you find it because it's that good. But it's one of those perfect examples of knowing brands, knowing what you're looking for, knowing the brands that constantly deliver quality. And this is one of those brands that everything that they make just feels luxurious on your body. <laughs> and I think the nice thing about pieces like this is buying them brand new, yes, is very expensive, but if you know where to look for them secondhand, you can still get a really good, somewhat affordable deal on them. Having something like this in my wardrobe when I still wanna feel casual, I still wanna feel like I can go to the thrift store and do my thing, but I still wanna have a little bit more of a polished look. I think having those elevated t-shirts the Rosetta Getty is another perfect example of a t-shirt that is just taken to such a heightened level. There was so much design and thought put into a piece like that. I just can't help but think it's going to be a piece that stays in my wardrobe and never feels outdated or never feels like it doesn't have a place in my wardrobe. As a self-proclaimed disliker of belts, this has definitely been a change and a challenge in my wardrobe. But let me tell you, there's a story that goes along with this. One thing that stylists will always tell you is swap out the belt. When you have a dress that comes with a matching belt, instantly take that belt off and swap it out with something fun and unique. It's great for vintage dresses because a lot of times vintage dresses won't come with belts, so it kind of forces you to do that. It really makes a difference in the originality of the piece. I worked at Nordstrom at the Grove in Los Angeles, and it was in such close proximity to a lot of these studios. So oftentimes what would happen is they would do studio pulls. 
costume wardrobe designers would come in and pull pieces. And one of my favorite ones to watch was the Pretty Little Liars costume designer. She was so fun and so fashion forward. I would just watch her from afar. I probably looked like a creeper because I'd be like, what's she picking out today? I gotta see. One thing that I saw her pull the most was accessories. And if you go back and look at a lot of those styles, one of my personal favorite was Lucy Hale, her character. She would always wear dresses with mixed matched belts. She would never wear the belt that actually went with the dress. And I think that's true for Carrie Bradshaw too. If you look back on any of those style outfits, they are so iconic. Maybe not necessarily timeless in all cases, but at least iconic in their own sense. And I think a lot of it is because she would pull elements from the outfits and replace them with unique pieces, which really ended up bringing character to the outfit as well as the actual character in the TV show. Brilliant tips that I think anybody can learn from a stylist. Next up is my Uniqlo sling bag. This was last year's bag of the year and that was for a reason. It is just the easiest piece to just grab and go. It's all I ever wear, I'm not gonna lie. Going out to the theme parks, going to the thrift store, you name it, I grab my Uniqlo sling crossbody. It was really kind of a nice piece to swap out when I got so addicted to wearing fanny packs. And I think that's where it really started to creep into people's wardrobes is because those crossbody like sling shoulder backpacks were so big and this just kind of made it into a purse element. And also not to mention, it is so affordable and they're machine washable. Those are two elements that I absolutely love. This next one I think is my personal favorite as far as what has made such a big difference in my wardrobe. I think it's personally because I live in a very sunny state. <laughs> Wearing sunglasses is super important to me now. Uh, it's always been important to me, but like now more than ever, I reach for my sunglasses. It really started with this one when I went out here on vacation one year, I purchased it to be able to go around the theme parks. And I think ever since then, I have just absolutely loved having it on hand. It turns such a practical thing into a wardrobe piece. I know a lot of people are probably gonna look at this and think, okay, Blanche, have fun with your sunglasses chain. That's great, good for you. I'm never gonna lose my sunglasses. I love that element. This one's kind of been an ongoing one, so I'm sorry to anybody who has been following this for so long and is just like, Laura, enough with the necklace. Like, we get it, you're obsessed with it. I love this heart necklace and I think it's made me think a lot more critically about statement jewelry pieces. I try my best when I like something. I don't go out and get all of the things. I get like one or two things to make a difference in my wardrobe. So when I'm feeling kind of like on my punk rock, like edgier side, I reach for this necklace. When I'm feeling a little bit more of like, the girly elevated. I reach for my Biwako pearl necklace. Full transparency, this one was gifted to me. Biwako though is available on Wolf and Badger and that to me kind of like sealed the deal and working with them. I am such a fan of that company. I absolutely love websites that really showcase kind of starting off designers or designers who are just not quite there exposure wise. Farfetch, Sense, Wolf and Badger, those are all companies that I think do a really good job of providing a space for these designers who are just trying to get to that next level. I think a lot of times it can be really frustrating to discover new brands without going a cheaper route. If you're looking for something that still delivers the quality, like you want that silk piece, you want that really unique embroidered cotton linen piece, these are websites that you can look at and really find those hidden gems, those brands that like nobody's talking about just yet, but you know eventually they're gonna reach that level. I think another company that does a decent job of that is Anthropology, but it's not as long lasting and you really have to sift through. Whereas a company like Wolf and Badger, it's just right there. Like in every page that you look at, it's unique, different clothing. Whereas Anthropology, I would say once a season, they get four or five brands that are just like, oh, that's interesting, that's new, I've never heard of that. Something that I've learned over the last year is having just one or two pieces of jewelry that you can lean on to change the outfit has been so important to my wardrobe. So again, something like this kind of gives me 
Sandy Lang vibes, kind of gives me that like punk rock, like edgy look. But when I want that kind of clean girl aesthetic, I lean more towards a piece like this. Uh, yeah, I'll say it. I spent all of last year collecting slip dresses, okay? I am obsessed with slip dresses. I do so much with these pieces. Throw on an oversized t-shirt, just let it hang off of you, boom, it's a look. Throw on a cardigan, boom, it's a look. Wear it by itself is like a sexy slinky dress, boom, it's a look. I love slip dresses, okay? I'm sorry. I just, there's something about them. It's allowed me to really stick to different formulas. So instead of just the jeans and a t-shirt concept, I can throw on a slip dress and a t-shirt and have a completely different look. My Adidas track skirt. This was such a magical thrift purchase. I haven't worn it as much during the winter time just because I don't wear skirts as much. So many outfits have come out of this and I do think this is one of those pieces that is so in the moment. Everybody is wearing that like sporty, elevated look, kind of mixing and matching, kind of going high low. I mean, it's just like one of those, the possibilities are just never ending. Having some kind of a track skirt, I never in a million years would have thought that that would be a piece that I would covet so much in my wardrobe. This next one's gonna be a little polarizing. I can already feel it. And listen, I get it. It's a mixed bag. Some people love this. Some people hate this. Some people love to hate this. Wherever you sit, it with it. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm obsessed. Shoulder pads. Five years ago, I would have been like, excuse me, what? But now there is just something about shoulder padding. I love it. I look for it. Like I literally, when I'm out thrifting, I scan the aisles and I just look for something that's like, like just a little bit bigger. Just, just give me the Give me that elevated. It's like the bigger the hair, the closer to, it's like bigger shoulders, the closer to my ears. I don't know. Again, I know it's not something for everybody. I know not everybody digs the look and I completely understand, but I think what really changed me was when I thrifted this Isabelle Marant top. This just like, I mean, it's, it's just, it's so cool. It's so effortless. I've been obsessed with the Frankie Shop t-shirt for a very long time. I still have not made the purchase. I'm one of those people that's always like, I'm gonna find it thrifting. I'm determined, okay? Still waiting on that day, manifesting currently. I have this one, which is a Babaton number from Aritzia. It's got the built-in shoulder padding. I have a couple t-shirts with shoulder pads built in. I just, I love the look. I really tried to start looking at my wardrobe and I think a lot of people are hitting this point in their life. I don't work a typical nine to five. So if you work from home or you work remotely, whatever the case may be, if you're not constantly going into an office or going into an actual place of business, you don't have a reason to look polished. And I think I've just kind of erased that part of my brain where I go, oh, because I don't have a reason, I shouldn't do it. No, it's something that I personally enjoy. If you don't enjoy it and you love wearing sweatpants, keep doing that because that is what makes you happy. For me personally, I got I got over that. I'm like, no, you know what? I, I, wanna, I wanna turn over a new leaf in my personal style. One of the ways that's let me do that easily is the shoulder padding. I feel like that brings me into a little bit more of a business casual look. And that just beautifully segues into my next piece and my last piece, my suiting, my blazers. Something really interesting has happened lately. I have not been buying menswear blazers, which is always what I've gravitated to in the past. Don't get me wrong, I still love them. We all know why, the quality is just that much better. But for me, I have absolutely been loving like a nice fitted tailored blazer. This has been my recent favorite purchase, a long line duster jacket. It's a worsted wool. Worsted wool. That's a tongue tie. It's a very like tight woven knit wool. It's meant to just stand the test of time. And let me tell you, this jacket is probably between 30 and 40 years old. So it has already proven to stand the test of time. Such a good addition to my wardrobe. And I really feel like it's been that last piece to kind of top off and really kind of complete my elevated wardrobe for the year. That is it for all of the pieces. If you have made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I feel like these last five months has really been where all of these items have come into my life. I covet every single one of them. I think they are such good pieces that just have changed my style, my wardrobe completely. And the best part is, 
I would say 70% of these pieces are thrifted. Channeling some even cooler thrift finds this year in 2024. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys are new around here, I might have a couple extra videos for you right here and right here, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.